Welcome. In this Java tutorial, we'll learn how to use a string class. Additionally, we'll discuss how Java stores strings in memory, so you may also want to review my video on Java memory handling. Some important facts to know. String is a data type that holds text. Internally, strings are an array of the primitive type care. The string class has a variety of methods to compare and modify strings. We'll start by looking at the most common way to declare and initialize a string, which is to say string, the name of the variable, in this case a, and then set it to a string literal, in this case hello. Java will place the variable on the stack and create a pointer pointing to the object on the heap. Typically, it will put it inside the string pool. This means if we create another string variable with the same value, Java will look in the string pool, see it's already there, and then have the new variable point at the same memory location. This behavior reduces memory usage. This behavior is different from most other object types in Java. Now let's look at a second, less common way to declare and initialize a string variable. This is how we declare and initialize most objects. When we do it this way, Java will create a unique object outside of the string pool. If we do it again this way, even though it's the same value, it will create a second object on a different part of the heap. While this is unusual behavior for a string, this is typical for most objects. Now let's look at this line of code. For this lesson, SOP stands for System Out Print Line. A double equals B checks if the variables have the same data stored on the stack. For primitive types like inter boolean, double equals works well because all the data is stored on the stack. However, with object types like strings, double equal checks if the pointers on the stack are pointing at the same location on the heap. In this case, A and B point to the same memory location, so it will return true. Now let's look at another line of code. We're checking if C and D are pointing at the same memory location on the heap. They aren't, so even though the data itself is the same, it will evaluate to false because the variables point at objects in different physical locations. Checking if two variables are pointing at the same memory location is called referential equality, and it's why double equals isn't a good way to compare objects. In the case of strings, it will generally work, but is a risky practice. For strings, we compare equality using the equals method. The extra space inside the parentheses aren't necessary, but it makes it easier to see. A equals B compares the data that A and B point to. In this case, A and B are pointing at the same block of data, so they will, of course, be equal. C and D are pointing to different memory locations, but the data in those memory locations is the same, so the equals method will return true. Let's look at another way to use the string class's equals method. Here, we're calling the equals method from the string object that A is pointing at. We're passing the string literal hello to the method. Since A is pointing at a string object that is equal to the string literal we're passing, the method will return true. Next, let's change A. This created a new object in the string pool and changed A to point at that new object. The original object is unchanged. We didn't modify the object. We created a brand new object and changed where A was pointing. In fact, unlike most objects, strings are immutable. That means once they are created on the heap, they can't be modified. People often get confused because it seems we have modified the string A is pointing at, but really we just created a new string. Let's look at some other examples to see how strings are handled in memory. We created the E variable on the stack and have it point to a new object in the string pool. Next, we create a new variable F and copy the data from E. In the case of a primitive data type, we would copy the actual value. For object types like strings, we copy the pointer, so both variables are pointing at the same object in heap memory. This would happen even if the string weren't in the string pool. Next, we create a variable g on the stack and have it point at a new object in the string pool. Finally, we create a fourth variable h and have it point at a newly created object, capital HI, on the heap. Now let's look at some comparisons. E equals F checks if the two variables point at objects with the same value. E and F point at the same object, so naturally, that object has the same value as itself, and the method returns true. Next, we check E equals H. Even though E and H point at objects that say hi, the strings equals method is case sensitive, so it returns false. Finally, we use the equals ignore case method to compare E and H. Ignoring the capitalization, ENH pointed objects with the same value, so the equals ignore case method returns true. 
It's important to know that even though all object types have an equals method, many objects equals method only checks referential equality. So their equals method behaves like double equals. Now let's look at some other useful methods in the string class. Here we call the length method. The length method counts the number of characters in the string and returns it as an int. G is pointing at howdy, so length will return five. Next, we have the substring method, which copies a part of the string and returns that part as a new string. The original string the variable is pointing at will be unchanged. We saw that when calculating a string's length, we start counting at one. But when using the substring method, we start counting at zero. For a string with length five, the indexes go from zero to four. In this example, we passed one argument to the substring method. The substring will start at index two inclusive and go to the end of the original string. This call returns a substring wdy. There's another version of the substring method with two parameters, so we provide it with two arguments. In this case, the first argument is where we want to start, and the second one is where we want to stop. However, you must be careful because the first value is inclusive, while the second value is exclusive. We start at index one, but we'll end one before index four. This call returns the substring OWD. Let's look at the compare to method. The compare to method in the string class compares the two strings lexicographically and returns an int of their difference. If the two strings have the same value, it will return zero. In this case, it returns negative 32. If we switch the order of H and E, it would return positive 32. Finally, let's look at a couple of examples of how we might use these methods. Here, we're taking the length of the string h is pointing at and storing it in an int value i. Notice that since i is a primitive type, all the data is on the stack. Here, we check if e equals the string literal pi. In this case, it returns false, so the code in the curly brackets doesn't get executed. The string class has many other useful methods you can read about in the documentation linked in the video description. If you want to keep learning, click on the thumbnail for the next video. Otherwise, check out the full Java playlist. See you soon.